Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to the weekly outlook. Let's go. So let me start with this one, since this one is the one I just posted, and you want to look at the chart in the daily. And if you look in the chart in the daily, you can probably see, let me take these off. I think it's pretty easy to see why I'm looking for a downside, because I'm looking at this as a flat formation, a three-wave corrective formation. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it is going to go down immediately. Nothing stops this pair from keep going up like this for a while, maybe even to this level and then go down. So if this goes up the next 200 pips and then start to fall, no big deal. I'll wait for the 200 pips or I may even trade the 200 pips to the upside. What I'm telling you is that at this point, starting from this point here now, anytime it could start to fall. So what you need to know is keep an eye on it so when it starts to fall, you don't miss it. It doesn't necessarily have to start immediately. So if you go in a lower time frame, you're going to see that it's coming down, but that doesn't mean it's falling. They need to break the structure, consolidate, and then go. So this here, as it is, could possibly start to make a flag here. And if they make a flag here, we're going to get one more here. I, I, I'm actually expecting one more up because I would like them to break that top. Make one more up, and then I think we can see the fall. So I'm still expecting at least one more up in this. If that happened, I would see whether I get a buy setup or not. If that doesn't happen and they start to fall, I will be in the sell. Is that easy? It doesn't mean you start selling immediately. It means you start preparing yourself, understanding where the structure is going to go, what it's going to do, and what you need to do. Right? That's all. I'm just giving you an, uh, uh, I'm giving you a way in front, sometimes a week in front of everybody else and for on, on trading view. Watch what this currency is doing. When I post the, the yen going up, everybody was, oh, this Pung yen is going to fall. It's going to go. We don't know what he's talking about. Some Article 50 is going to come. The world is going to end. And Pung is going to fall. And this is going to fall. This is never going to go up. One guy even put it very black. This is never going to go up. I'm telling you, one week after, Everybody has this chart in trading view going up. It doesn't matter what they were trading. Some were trading animals, some are trading whatever else they see, but they have it going up. No, it's not about that. It's not about they're trailing the chart or they're copying. It's just that they see it much later than we see it. Because we look at this, the, the, the patterns of the chart, and the pattern is telling me on a daily basis that this has to go up. If you're waiting for an animal, it's going to take you a longer time to see things in the chart. Right, But everybody suddenly decided it's going to go up now, right? Great. I'm glad that they can finally see it, even if it took them a, while, a week later or two weeks later to see it, that they see it. That, that's what we're here for, to help each other, right? What, what did I say? Wait for a flag. You're getting a flag pattern here now. You see that corrective structure there? If this goes up, your trade is here. Never said this is going to go up forever. It is a similar structure as the structure we're looking at. We want this to come up to about this level. First, either to break this top or to break this top, and then it could start to go down. See? So the Pung New Zealand could be the leading one to the downside. does not mean the Pung Yen is not going to go down. It means the Pung Yen may first make a move to the upside. And this move to the upside, I'm thinking the Yen is the leading factor in it, not the Pung. The Yen would be the one that will lead this move to the upside before we get the downside. And what you'll be getting is a one, two, three-wave structure and downside, making this your corrective structure. See the similarities to the, to the Pung New Zealand now? Very similar. So understanding that each pair will move individually of itself. It's not correlated to another pair. It's individual of its own because the two currencies that are involved here are not the same two currencies as the, the Aussie and the... the, the, the maybe, maybe the New Zealand goes up first, the Pung New Zealand falls. Then we get the yen go up and the yen, the, the, the Pung yen goes up. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe the Pung yen goes up first. So it, 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 really, it really, we don't know. We are just looking at the structure, deciding that this is what the structure shows us. And then we said, if the structure does what we think it is going to do, we will trade it. What if it doesn't do what we think it's going to do? That's okay. I will simply not trade it. 
right? It's, it's, it's that easy. That is how you need to be. That's what you need to do in the market. Your, your analysis to, to tell you what to expect, and then you should have a strategy to trade it if it does what you expect it to do, right? It's like you're waiting at the bus stop. If the bus comes, you get in the bus and you go. If the bus doesn't come, what do you do? Jump in front of a car? You just relax. The bus will come. If it doesn't come, take a taxi, right? Don't, don't go crazy. So when my charts don't go, when I said look for the breakout and it doesn't break out, don't go crazy in the charts. Just relax. Find another chart that has a, something that is moving and go trade it, right? Wait for the next bus, exactly. But people just go crazy, you know? It's like, it's like I, I'm wondering what's these guys, you know, what's wrong with them, right? It's like, go do something important. You have something important to do. If it doesn't break out, then no big deal. When it breaks out, we'll all trade it. Let's wait for this. I think we're going to get that move up. And we want to look at the yen in that case. If we're thinking that the yen is going to go up, what is the yen doing right now? So remember when I posed that the yen is going to go down here, when I posed this one that the yen is going to go down from that point, what they were saying, oh, this is never going to happen. This is not going to go down. This is only going to go up. One guy, even an Elliott Waver expert came on. He says, hey, I trade Elliott Waver since, since 10 years now. And I'm telling you this thing is bullish. Okay. Okay, let's see. So it came down. Now I said, guys, be careful. It's going to go back up. And then one guy came and said, hey, never going to go back up. You, got, you guys have to stop that attitude of it's just post your chart. If you think it's, you, it has a different view on it, take your different view, post it, and put it, tag it to my chart. So we will see your views. Don't come with things like it's never going to happen. None of us knows what's going to happen. So it's never going to happen is, is only craziness, right? So what I'm looking for in this is that this is a corrective structure. We got an A, we got a B, and that's what we're looking for, a C. I don't think the C wave is over because I think the C wave now will make some corrections here, drop here, but then the C wave is going to go up. And this is the move that is likely going to move the Pong yen, the Euro yen, the Aussie yen, all the yen pairs. I think all the yen pairs is going to get that movement. So this movement is very short. This is not a very long one. This will not stay for very long. Probably I think this is going to, you know, we are already making a down move here. You can already see that. On a lower time frame, we broke out of that there. And, you know, you're getting, if you know, if you have a strategy to trade it, you're getting a setup here. But be careful when they come here because they can go back up before they come. And I actually show you where they did that previously, right? They did the same thing here previously. They made one, they made two, they made three, they drop, give you divergence, and they go back up. We have one. We can get two, we can get three, we can drop here, give you divergence, and go back up. See? Easy, right? Pretty easy stuff. It's so simple. Why, why worry? Just learn to do it simple way, right? Is there an advantage of using two different technicals such as Fibonacci wave? Do you, is that, that's, that's not how you read the chart. I wouldn't even read the question anymore. Anytime you're talking about that's not what wave theory is about. Fibonacci is and all of that is not part of wave theory. So uh, forget about it, right? The question is, it's not related to what we do here. Right? So you, you see I don't have any Fibonacci on here. It's not related. What I'm looking at is the wave structure and how the wave structure is behaving and what is when it's completing itself and whether this is a complete pattern and what should the pattern do. That is all the things we teach you in the training, in the training sessions that we have, the six weeks training that we have. We teach you how to do all of that stuff. Right. So we're looking for an upside on this. Now, short term, today, this week. You look for a cell setup. Maybe this cell setup come here and then start to go back up. So this week, we're going to look for this cell. If it's a short-term cell, you may get a sell. You may get a buy. You may get another sell, and then you would look for the buy. All of this could happen this week. The first move up on the Pung Yen will probably be in the Pung, right? The Pung is in this pattern here. See this pattern, this short-term pattern here? This pattern would either break now, and this is a good trade, by the way, this week if it breaks. Or they're going to go back up, tag the top, and then come down. But you notice I said then come down. So the question you're going to ask yourself on the daily, why all the punk pairs are looking downside? Because of this. So if this goes up a little more there, there's a chance it's going to come down here. Right? So we're, we're, look, we're looking at the top there to tell us. What are the possibilities of this? And this has a number of possibilities. I'm going to draw them very fast for you. One of the possibilities is that they come back here and they go back there and then come down. Downside, 
right? That's the impulse to the downside. The other possibility is that they just go back up here and come down. Possibility downside. You notice all the impulses are showing me downside regardless of where this goes. Regardless of how this behaves. If this come back here and go back there, it's still downside. So we could have a triangle in here. Everybody remember my copper chart? We were looking for one, two, three, four, five, and downside on the copper chart. But then we realized very quickly that instead of that, we had one and we had this pattern here. One, two, three, four, five, and go up before you come down. See? Which one is going to be? Well, we are tracking that on the lower time frame to tell us which one it's going to be. That's what wave pattern is about. Now, when you're forecasting something, you're using the information you have now to make the forecast for the future. And you could be wrong, right? We may get it wrong because we don't know exactly which one of those two will go, but we are going to take it step by step and we're going to see which one goes. But if you ask me, I'm thinking, if you ask me what I think it's going to, I think it's just going to fall from here. And I could be wrong. I know the possibilities of it and I know where I'll be wrong. That's the whole good thing about wave trading. You understand how this could develop. And because you understand how it could develop, you know the limits of the forecast you're making. So sometimes we make a forecast and we're a little ahead of ourselves in it because we thought the correction is over, but it's not over. That's okay. That's pretty okay. We are either not in the trade or we take a break-even trade or we take a very small loss. Any of those three options are good for me because when it does what I want it to do, I get a very big win, right? That's the whole point. When you win the trade and it does what you want it to do, you get a very good risk to reward. When it doesn't, you either get a break even, you're either not in the trade or you take a small loss. Those are the three options you get when you're wrong. When you're correct, well, you don't have to worry about it. You're correct. Right? It's that simple. So what do we think? Remember I was saying this one is going to go back up? We were talk, thinking from here it's going to go back up. Right? I had that posted that it's going to go back up from there. Well, that is because we were looking at a different structure. We were thinking this structure, this one. Remember, I thought that was going to go back up because we were thinking this structure is making a one, two, three to go up to complete the C wave and then come down. Well, it turns out instead of making a one, two, three, it's making more of a triangle in here. So is this a one, two, three, four, five wave triangle? Maybe. So what we will do is we'll wait to see whether this breaks. And if this breaks here, this is your trade. If they break this corrective structure here, this is your trade. Actually, if they go break the top and start to come down, that's a better trade, right? If you know how to trade that, because look what they did previously here. They broke this structure, make a deep one, touch the top, and then start it to come down. So very likely, this structure could repeat exactly what this structure did. Go back, test the top, and then come down. One hour, let's see. If they're going to go test the top, this one here will tell us whether we're going to get this trade up and whether we're going to get that trade down. But I'm looking for this trade to the downside. See how easy it is? It's not that difficult if you know what you're looking at and if you understand how to read it. That is what you need to do. Spend time understanding how to read this stuff. Right? It's, it's like reading any other charts. I don't care what's your profession. You're, you're, a ses, you're a seismologist. You're a doctor. You read a chart somewhere in your life, right? Whether you're an economist, you're, you have to read a chart somewhere in your life. They will give you a chart, and you will have to read it. Well, we are traders. Here is your chart. Learn to read it. Well, it's easy because I have spent a lot of time doing this. I've spent years hours, 10, 12 hours a day for two, three years doing this, and I still spend the next 10, 12 hours a day doing it. As one person said, I see you up five every morning. That's true. You will see me up five in the morning almost every single day, with rare exceptions, because that's what I do. You have to keep working and working. You're in, success does not come automatically, right? You don't get lucky in this stuff. This stuff doesn't just register in your brain. You wake up one morning and, hey, I get it. You have to study it. You have to do, ask my traders, Tom is one he's going to tell you. You have to work and work and practice and practice and learn and learn and keep learning. And when you think you all, when you think you got it right, go learn some more. Just when you think you got it right, 
go do some more work because you, you're probably still not there. That is what will bring the success. Not to go into somebody's chart and troll it. That wouldn't give you success. You'll become, you become a very good troll, not a good trader. So it is easy, guys. I'm telling you, it's easy. For me, it's easy. It's going to be easy for you if you do the same thing I do. If you practice it the way I practice. The traders in my room, they get a head start because in six weeks, I give them what I learned in, in years. And then they start practicing on it. So they get it pretty fast. Right? So, oh, sorry. What did I hit there? Yep, let's go back. So watch this trade. It was a, it was a small trade we took this morning and I closed it because I didn't like the way this was going. We actually closed that for, for one pip loss or something. I didn't like the way it's going because now I'm looking for the buy setup. Right? I think we may get a buy first before they go. So let's see. If we get that buy, it would be great. If not, we'll wait for the sell when they break the structure. See that? It's easy. It's not that difficult. So let's wait. If they come, you'll get a good risk to reward to the bottom there. And if this actually breaks out, it's wonderful. Every single chart you look in, in the indices, the, the stocks, everything, they follow the same principles. It is a principle of nature, human, being, human, human behavior in the market. So let's start. Dollar index. What I said to you guys last week, remember I was saying we are looking for this to come down and then we would look for it to go back up? Well, that's exactly what it's doing, right? So good for us. It's doing what we expect it to do. We are expecting some consolidation in here and then the next move up. So let's go look at that. It's going up, but I think somewhere in here, we're getting small consolidation, small consolidation, but at some point here, we're gonna get a deeper consolidation. You can see that already, the chart is showing you that, right? That we're gonna get some deeper consolidation and then we're gonna get more upside. We're expecting more upside and we're expecting more upside in this chart, right? I'm not looking for more downside as yet, which means I'll be looking for downside on the Euro, the Pong, the Aussie, everything. Right? And upside on the Yen, upside on the Swiss, upside on the CAD, right? So let's see how this goes. If, there, if there's a change in this structure at any point, I will expect that change when it comes to the trend line. So far, we're not expecting that change. We're expecting it to continue to go up after corrections, of course. So Euro, downside, first I want to see them correct. I want to see the Euro make a correction here and then the downside. Remember, they always make correction. They always make correction. They don't go in straight lines. So as you can see on my chart, I'm already looking for that correction here, right? So somewhere in here, I'd like to see a deeper correction and then we'll get downside. Maybe a buy opportunity for some of you if you trade short term. Uh, what if it makes five waves? Possible. That's what I'm saying. When it comes to the trend line event, then we will decide whether it's going to make five waves. We will know. We have ways of identifying whether it's going to be a five wave or a three wave structure. When it comes there, we'll know. Right now. I think it's a three-wave structure. We're going to treat it as a three-wave structure until we see a change in the structure. So good, by the way, yeah. So watch this here. We're looking for a correction. What would that correction be? We don't know as yet, but we'll keep an eye on it. All right? So watch this trade here. It means some upside today. So this week, we may just get correction in the euro, right? Last week, we got the fall. This week is the correction. So Pung. We already showed you what we were expecting and that, and no problem that the Pong is gonna go down and the Euro is gonna go up. You want to look at the Euro Pong, right? If that happens, you want to look at the Euro Pong because you're gonna get a wonderful trade in the Euro Pong. Aussie, downside. No, no question of the direction in which this is gonna go, right? <laughs> that, you're funny. Okay, so let's go. Absolutely no, absolutely no question of where we think this is going to go. Now, there is only one instance where we think this is going to change. That is when it breaks this low. When it breaks that low, we will see whether we think this is going to continue to go up as a, as a contract, as a one, two, three flat, or whether we're going to come here for a triangle. But I, I'm hoping it comes here for our own reason. We have, you know, big trades plans at the bottom there, right? Well, that is how it moves. If you think this was impossible, let me show you what was impossible. If you think this move was impossible, try trading this. That was impossible. That one gave us a headache, and we still got that right, right? That was a headache, and we still got it right. So this is not a headache. This one here was a headache. 
because that one has a lot of waves in it. This one is actually pretty smooth. The, the only thing we thought, remember I was looking for a deep correction here and then go up, well, they made a deep correction here and go up. They tagged it, break it, give us divergence and downside. So on the four hour, I think if there's going to be any more upside, it's going to be a three wave correction. Keep your eyes on this. If you get flags, small flags, sell, small flags, sell. But uh, they, if they break this structure, I'll be looking for them to come back here and then go down. That will be a one. That will be a one, two, three. That is if they break it. I don't think they'll break it. But, you know, if they do, we'll look for that trade. So if you're in the trade, you just need to move your stops and follow it. So if they do break, it's going to be a one, two, three, right? It's going to be a one, two, three, and then down. Don't worry about the downside. The downside is pretty safe. All you can do is take short-term buys and then down, sell. Right now, if you're looking for short terms, they make flags here, sell. They make flags, sell. So remember I said, watch this when it breaks, make a flag and then sell. That's your sell setup, right? You're not in that trade. Look for another flag and sell, right? New Zealand. New Zealand, on the other hand, I think this pattern is showing me upside. Let's go to the four-hour. So I think this one is pretty easy. You don't have to worry much about it. This is not difficult for you to see. So every time you see something like, like an impulse and a correction, look for another impulse, right? An impulse and a correction, look for another impulse. Well, you see an impulse and this looks like a correction. What do you look for? Look for another impulse. Right? It's, this is not even difficult to show you. Right? It's like you can see it. You just need to look at the chart. If you look at the chart, you see it. One hour, we are in that corrective structure right now, right? Now, could that be the start of, of, or part of this impulse coming down? Possible, this could possibly be, but so far I don't see it that way. For, for it to be that way, they need to break this structure. They need to break out of this structure, the Darien, and I don't see them breaking out of that structure right now. So on the one hour, what is the trade? This could possibly be one, two, three, four, five here. But once they get to this level, we'll start to look for the upside. So there may be a very, very short term trade here if you want come back to this level, right? Maybe even breaking this back a couple of pips. But after that, I think we will be looking for upside and we'll be looking for this to go up. So you can wait for the upside by waiting for them to break here, take the trade to that level and then watch it go up from there. Or if you want a short term sell and then look for buy setup. The short term sell is a little dangerous because if you, if you don't get out fast enough, you may end up trapped in it, right? More like this, see this one here? One, two, three, and then up. So I think we could get here and then we should see the upside. I don't think it's going to be a big downside. I'm not, I'm not interested in that cell. It has to change the structure I'm looking at before I'm interested in the cell. So I'm interested in the buy and we'll see where that goes, right? CAD, very interesting one. So now we have this whole big pattern here that is... CAD is very, very corrective and it's, it's moving a lot of, if you look at the previous waves that they make, just look at the waves and you can see this, you know, up. So that is why when we were treating this wave, we were only selling. We sold, we sold, we sold, we sold. We were selling the tops because we were expecting this to be all the correction. We were thinking that this here would be all the correction here and this one would start to fall. We even sold the top there and we sold here that this is going to fall. And then the structure changed, right? When we relook at it, see, we had cells here, we had cells from the top here, cell. There was a lot, all the tops were cells, just like this was a cell too, right? So what we realize is there's a structural change and that means there's a possibility for one more of this messy one here to go back, right? So let's go in the four hour and look at that. We're in a big sideways, we made an impulse down. And we're in a big sideways move here. So I think they need to go back to the top there and then look for one more impulse down. This would be a corrective structure like that. So that is why on Friday I was thinking that this one will go up. I thought from this point here, they will go up. That didn't go well. If you took a loss, you should have taken a small loss. If you, if you didn't take the trade because there was a news event coming, you did the right thing, which is what most of my traders do. We didn't trade it because we were expecting news event in an hour. We prepared it and we were hoping that it will not break before the news event. I was away from the chart. When I came back, it broke already. I probably would have posed the head up, heads up not to trade before the news event, but that's something we don't do an hour before a news event. We don't, but we were preparing to buy it. 
during the news event. Well, it actually during the news event went down, so we did not trade that. We actually traded, traded another chart to the downside. We traded the, the Aussie cat to the downside. Because the Aussie cat has a sell setup. The Aussie New Zealand had a the cat New Zealand had a sell setup and the Aussie cat. New Zealand cat, Aussie cat. This one was a buy setup first, but we couldn't trade it because they already broke the structure. Right? So came down. I was looking for a tree wave in here to sell, but now they made one, two, three here. So we got a tree wave there. If they break this, this is a sell setup. Right? If they don't break that structure, they need to break this stop before I get involved in the buy. So right now, I don't have a trade set up on this except for a short-term sell, very short-term sell if they come here because they're going to go back up. If they move up here, at this point, we will look for a sell. It's unlikely we'll get a buy setup on it because if this keeps going up, that's not a buy setup for me anymore, right? So we'll see how this goes. It's, it's a weight game on this one. There's still a big move to the downside. I post all the time frame of the chart so you can follow them and you will have enough time to follow them as we go. I will follow up on lower time frames so you can see. Swiss, I think, will make a correction. They're about to do that. Under one hour, you can see that they're breaking this structure here. Kind of making a, this, this channel at the top there, flag looking channel. So if they break, this is a sell setup this week. Short term sell because we are still going up, so you may get a pullback like this if you get a trade here. That's a nice trade, and then look for the next one up, right? This one could go lower if this breaks, it could go lower. So, you will you definitely want to take this sell because they can drop to this low. That's a daily trend line coming. See, so if you get this sell here, you may want to take it because it could drop this way. So, you want to keep your eyes on that trade. This week, that could be an interesting one. And we are watching it very closely because if this goes, it could not necessarily will go there, but it could go there. So you may want to keep an eye on that one. Yen, I already showed you what I think Yen is going to do short term. It's going to be in a consolidation here and then upside. So if you have the skill level to trade in these smaller time frame consolidation, good. If you don't, stay away from it. <laughs> you want to know the strategy we use to trade. It's not necessarily, each strategy depends on what the pattern is at the time. Is it the four hour structure, a daily structure, a weekly structure, a one hour structure completing? It depends on, you know, what is the next lower degree structure it's making. That is how we trade. It's not only the breakout. It's not just the breakout, but the breakout is a clue to the sell setup. So that's why I said the people trade it differently. It depends. You will have to find a strategy to trade breakout that suits you. Go do back testing it and then, then do forward testing and see how that works, right? So we'll come to that. Euro Oz. Euro Oz is breaking, so we may get that one more downside on the daily. Remember I said on the daily, there's a likelihood we could get one more downside here. One, two, three, four, five, and this one could come here, right? So. What are we looking for in this structure, right? If you get one, two, three, four, five, that's the end of a structure, right? But if you count from here and you get one and you make one there, that will be two. This one is one of its own. This one is one of its own. This may be one of an extension in here. So a lower low can happen in here. Keep your eyes on that lower low, right? So of an extension within the, the, the C wave. So what you're going to do is watch this here. They're making a flag here. And if they make a flag there, we can get this trade here. Right? If you're looking for an extension, it could happen. So you're going to look for this trade to come down because this one is pretty aggressive down. So what we're looking for here in the one hour is a flag. And it seems like we're getting one. A corrective structure. We got one here. They could do a number of these because this is a small corrective structure and the breakout is a good trade. Don't miss it. Right? Now, how could this go down if we think Aussie is going to go down? Well, we also think Euro is going to go down. And while Aussie and Euro is going down, this could stay here for a long time. Right? Which means you might not get this trade this week. You may get it trending up slowly this week on a 15 minute trade to the upside, and then the drop. Remember, Aussie trade to the downside is only one more move before it hits the bottom and turn. 
Depends, yeah, something like seven. Depends which one you're looking for the extension to be in, right? But that's not what we're doing here now, right? So watch this trade. This trade is interesting for a downside. Short-term upside is possible, which means they can still continue to go up here some more, right? You, If you can do that, you may get short-term buys to the upside before they fall, right? So keep keep your eyes on this one. You may get some short-term buys this week. You're not going to get a long trade this week, and you get the long-term trade next week. You were in New Zealand, pretty much the same thing. Four hour, pretty much a nice big consolidation in the making here. This could come some more down. I don't think it's going to go aggressive, but then we're going to look for the big move to the upside. I don't think this has one big move to the downside. I think they're just making sideways movement here. Now, we were going to trade this only on the one hour. Every piece of trade should be a short trade for you, right? Now, we see this, but we are not trading that to the downside because at this point, I think you're going to start to look for upside. Upside may not be the start of the big move. It might be just part of a bigger correction. So look for upside on this one. Slow upside, not big. It's going to go very slow. It may go up because euro goes up. Euro is correcting to the upside, right? So this upside will be correction. It's not an impulse. It's a corrective structure, which means they may go very slow and then give you one more down, right? So be careful here. If you're going to trade it, it's very slow movement. If you're lucky, they give you, sometimes the correction gets those spike. So if you're lucky, you get a spike. Don't trade this currency. Remember I told you they'll make one more low, but don't trade it. So if you're not trading it, you did the right thing, see? It will come here, but you might not get the trade, just like this one, see? It might go there, but we didn't get the trade. We're not even interested in trading it. And the same thing here, we're not interested in trading this. Although I think it may come now, it looks like it's going to fall very fast. We're not interested. Because you don't get these trades. It's hard to trade them. These charts, are they consolidate for so long that you get tired of it and then it drops suddenly. Right? Euro CAD, nice setup here for a sell. You're getting a pullback. We expected this. right? We expected that pullback to the upside. By the way, in one of our new strategies, remember I told you we have a strategy even when you're wrong, you make money? This is one of them. I can't tell you how we did it. But somewhere in here, we had a trade on that went wrong. Right? And it keep going up and we, our trade got in, in the profit there now. That's an amazing strategy. Just can't tell you how it's doing, how it's working. But even when you're wrong, you end up making money in this thing. It's amazing. It's, this, is, this is one of the breakthrough strategies that we found out. And we were actually handed it, given, given it by somebody. No, it's not hedging. It has it, actually the opposite of hedging. It's very far from hedging. Right? Not hedging. Yes, don't, don't, don't. Never, ever hedge. I can tell you from my, from my experience, don't hedge. The banker just love you to hedge. When you hedge, you actually accept the loss. When you hedge a trade, you said, I have a buy and a sell, and I, I lost everything in between. Right? Yep. Don't ever hedge. This, this, is the whole, this is a whole different strategy. Don't try to guess it. You guys will never guess it. You know why you'll never guess it? Nobody in the world ever does this. Nobody in the world is using this strategy. It's a combination of a number of strategies that we found out, and we were like, you know what? We can do it. And the only way you can do it is if you can do good forecasting. You can't do this without forecasting. The reason it works perfect for us is because we do forecast. And unless you can do that, sorry, don't even attempt to use that strategy. So on a losing trade, we are making money finally. Very interesting. One day I'm going to give you guys the strategy. I'm going to tell you about it, not give you, but I can tell you. So the hint will come very soon. Don't worry. It's amazing. It's really amazing how it works, right? My trade is uh, on the euro yen. I think we are about to turn, so you can look for your buy setup, right? I don't expect them to break this low, but even if they break that low, they are still going to go up because they are going to complete the three wave pattern in the daily. Now, let me just show you. This is definitely correction. Even if they break that low, this is correction for upside, right? So keep your eyes on this one. Watch this here. They may be turning right now. Wait for them to break and make a flag. They always make flags when they break. So 
This will go up mostly because of yen. I think also not so much because of the euro. Right now, it may start the move because of euro, but the big move to the upside will come only if the yen starts to go up. So the first move up here could be because of euro and then goes into consolidation, giving you that flag to trade. And then you take the trade because the yen will be the moving factor after that. Euro pong, it's in another triangle, pretty much like the euro, except this triangle is showing us possibility that it's going to go up. I don't think this is a triangle. I think we're getting a one, two, three here. Watch it at this level and then up. But it looks like a triangle. So if, if it proves a triangle, we'll be selling. This upside, by the way, is going to go down back, right? This upside is going to probably be like that. And then we're going to look for a bigger move to the downside, right? Put that in a weekly. You could probably see what we're looking for. We're looking for a one, two, three up. We're looking for this to go here, come back there, go there, and then come down, right? Yep, I still have the euro yet. It's almost close to, to, to make, well, I think I may even be in a little loss on it, but I'm not worried about it, right? My stop is based on the daily structure, so it's way below. I am not really worried about that trade. And if I take the loss, I'll take the loss. Absolutely no problem, right? So watch this trade here. The, this one, it's, it's, we're expecting some more low before they go, but if they start to break and make a flag, we'll start buying, right? We'll start buying on this one. I have confidence this trade is going to go, and I need to see how wrong I could be about it. And if I'm wrong about it, why am I so wrong about it? So only if they break this trend like this and consolidate here, I'll get rid of the trade, right? Oh, I, 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 I could hold trades for months, literally. It's how you trade. It's, it's what risk to reward you, man. And if it's, if it's 1% on my account, I need not worry about it. I know what the market do very often, right? You get a lot of things. Right? So watch this trade. I, 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 it's not, it's, I'm giving up. I actually bought here. I'm giving up all this profit that I had because I never expect them to make such a deep pullback. So it's not like I'm taking losses. Now I will be in a little losses, right? I'm just giving back everything that I made. But here's the thing. If this goes, I'm going to double down. I'm going to have one more trade here and this going up. So that will be two trades going now, which I wouldn't have done if I didn't have the first trade on, right? So let's go. Don't be, don't be afraid of the market, guys. I think most things, the biggest problem with retail traders, they're afraid of the market because they don't have an idea how it moves. They don't have an idea how structure behaves. And that scares you to death, right? And I know people are scared of the market. Believe me, I get those calls. I get those messages. Please, please, please help. I'm in this trade and I have no idea what it's going to do. I'm going to lose my account right now. Right? And then I said, okay, show me which trade you're in. And I don't worry, your account is safe. You're not going to lose it. I get that almost very, very often. Right? So look at this. Let's go to the Pong. Pong Oz is coming down pretty much like all, all Pong trades. Watch it at this level. I thought this one would come to this level as well before they go down, but they can do this and go down, right? They don't have to do that. I still expect that they could go back up some more. We'll keep our eyes on it as long as they don't break this structure here. If they break the structure, it's sell, right? If they break the structure, you look for a flag and you sell. If they don't, they can still climb to this top. So will we get a buy setup if that happens? Let's go look at it. It's a tough one, but you may be able to get a buy setup. Because if they start going up from here, you will have to look for a flag before you get the trade, right? But if they give you a flag here, take the trade up to this level, right? They can go tag that top. I'm expecting them to tag the top. They don't have to, but they, very often we are always looking for them to tag the tops or the bottoms before they change direction. So let's see if they're going to do that, right? And there's a reason for that. We look for a pattern that, that behaves that way, right? So let's watch this, see what it is. If it starts to break from here, though, you can see this, right? Look for sell setup. Pong, New Zealand, I think there's one more. So if we get a flag here, if we get a corrective structure like this here, yep, there's a buy setup. And then here you exit the trade because you'll be looking for sells, right? If we have five minutes, I'll give you the end why people are scared of the market. I'll, I'll help you guys stop being scared of the market. Pong CAD, it's pushing up. Same thing like all the Pong trades. I'm expecting this one to tag this stop first. Before they go down, you can see the one, two, three wave structure. 
and then done. Well, they're not tagging the top, and if they don't, that's okay. So we're looking at this piece here now in the four hour. It's climbing up slowly. You see, this is climbing up slowly. So if you get buy setups, you can take it. They can climb all the way to the top there. But if they start to break this structure here, we look for a sell setup, right? Remember this one, we were looking for the upside, and this turned out to be a much more complex pattern than I thought it was. We were looking for the break of this, and this should go, right? But then they broke, they come back, they broke, they make a big sideways here, and then we figure out, okay, that one is going to go up. We took the trade, it came back, give you break even, you just ignore it. We, stop, we just stopped trading it, because when they do like that, you don't really get good trades on them. You just get out of them and let it go. So now we're in this, and you can see they're pushing up again. So you probably get the next one hour trade. I will not take it. For the same reason, they'll come here, give me break even, come back here, and then, you know, if they break this structure, I'm going for the downside. All right, that's it. Because, you know, I'm not trading this anymore for now until I see real good setups that will give you good money. Because they're, they're wasting your time only. And they're, they're, your money is hooked up on it until you can take it out for break even. And you can't trade something else that is much better, right? So. Pong Swiss, same thing in the daily. Let me show you that. They all have that pattern. All the Pong pairs have that pattern, right? For a one, two, three, and then downside. I showed all of these pairs that they're going up, right? I think I posted Chung Pong chart showing you all of them has that little upside and down, right? Correction. This is actually completing its correction here if you look at it. 15 minutes, we rarely go there. I rarely go to the 15 minutes, but I'll go there if I want to see what the internal structure is. If I can't figure out the internal structure for a buyer or seller on the, on the one hour or so, I'll go into the 15 to see what it is. So like this, I think this is going to go up a little more here. So there may be short-term buys today and that. If you get it, take it. All right? If you get a nice short-term one hour buy there, see that flag? Ignore the trend line. See that flag they have there? They break. This is a nice trade for today. You guys could get this trade today, I think, today or tomorrow. I, I think we will get that today. It's a nice trade. And you know there's a top they are coming to. Let me just send, put a line for that top for you guys. When they break this top, then you start thinking to take profit. So that top is about. Is about 105 pips more for that, and your stop is going to be somewhere around. Let's say you have a stop under this low, it's going to be somewhere around 70 pips. You can 78 if you if you get in the, the entry in the best spot, you're gonna get about 78 pips stop for 105. That is breaking the who nobody says they can't go to that 270, and there's a 90 percent chance they get to that 270. So if you're lucky and they go all the way to the 270, you get a nice trade that will give you about 2 to 1. 232, that's more than 2 to 1. So it's going to be a good trade. It's worth taking. Right? Keep your eyes on this one. Let me take off this line so it doesn't give you guys any bias. Pong Yen, upside. Buy. Don't miss this buy because this has real good risk to reward, right? If this goes up, it has good real to it. And you can see they're making the flag here already. So if this break out, take the trade. Right? This one is a good one. Cadian, I think Cadian, we're looking for one more downside on the Cadian, and then there's a big breakout. Right? Cadian is coming down one more here. Break this low, and then there's a big move to the upside. Let me show you that structure in the daily. There's a big move up here. We think this is going sideways, sideways, sideways. Watch it when it comes here. We think they're going to come back at least to this trend line. Even if they're going to go down, they'll come back to this trend line. If not, it's a breakout to the upside. So this trade, there's a short-term trade to the downside today. Uh, you may be just a bit late for it, right? But not, not a very aggressive trade, so they'll probably pull back, right? They'll pull back here, and if they pull back and give you a flag, sell it. Oh, we don't do wave content here. Believe me, your wave count is different from mine. I know that for sure. You that that is that that's one thing I can tell you sure one hundred percent. If you're not my student, your wave count is different from mine, right? So Aussie yen, what we think Aussie yen will do? Remember, yen is going up, Aussie is coming down. This one is a little confusing here. So what that means is that you will probably just go sideways. You may just get sideways moves. So stay out of the Aussie yen. You're not going to get a big move. The big move on the Aussie yen, remember where I posted it, was this one. Right? 
Same thing. If you go read the if you go read the comments here, you'll probably see that a lot of people didn't think it was gonna go anywhere, right? You can go read them if just for the fun of it. But it's doing exactly what we expected to do, right? It went up a little more. That's what we expect. Went up a little more and then started to come down. Right? Exactly as we expected to do, because that's how we that is how we see the pattern behaving, right? Making this move up and then making the move down. So right now, don't don't go into traders yet. Nothing is happening. New Zealand yen, nothing is happening, but we're looking for the break to the upside. That also is a daily structure. Swiss yen, stay out of this. We don't trade that. New Zealand CAD, okay. We're expecting this up move. For my traders, watch it. We're expecting that trade there. And then from here, we'll see whether they come back or they break out, right? This is the structure, and we're expecting this to come back to the top here, and then we'll see whether we get that or whether they come back here for one more. Both of those scenarios are possible, but the first scenario right now is going back to the top. And they're going already, right? So for my traders, you, you, I hope you, you get that one because we were identifying that trade in there. Aussie Cat, also upside, right? The Aussie Cat broke slightly here, but we're expecting Aussie Cat. I don't think they're going to go very high. If they come back here, they may just come to about this level, making a one, two, three here for downside, right? So we're not keen on the Aussie Cat so much because the Aussie Cat is at the top of a big, big, big move. It's at the top of the move. You see, it's at the top there. There isn't much top to go. If you if you look at this entire structure, you're going to see that when they came back to that top there, right? They actually came down. So they did make a lot of consolidation in here. Well, they're making consolidation in here. And then we look for that drop there, right? So watch all that consolidation there. They're going to consolidate here and then drop. So don't try to buy the, 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 the thing. Let's get this consolidation here. Then we look for the sell. Aussie, New Zealand, some more downside possible. I think we're going to get a one, two, three here. One, two, three. Look for a flag, look for a sell, and then look for the upside. See? It's going to make a flag here for a sell setup. I think they're making one already. They're going to consolidate here some more, and then you look for the drop. Silver going up, but I, a long, a short term, I think silver has one more down. They're actually looking like a flag to go up, but I think they will come back here. Right, one, two, three, and then the upside. Daily and silver is this. You made a move up, you made a move down, and this is starting to go up. This is like the first wave to the upside. So we are expecting one, two, three here, and if they're gonna go up, they'll go up like this, leaving you with this pattern here, right? They always make corrections in there. Even if they break that top slightly, they're likely going to come back down. So if you're in the buy, you want to move your stops. You want to move your stops enough to protect what you have because they are likely going to come down back for that third wave before they go. Rarely you see them pull like this and go. You don't see that, right? You see three-wave pattern, three-wave pattern, unless it's a deep with a third, second wave in there, right? And we were showing this coming down, and then we we're showing it going up. So watch this case. I think we'll get more consolidation here. Look for a sell setup. Same here. I think you want to look for a sell setup. Even if they break and go a little more, look for a sell setup before they go. At least let them give us three waves here before they go. All right. So look for a sell setup. Four hour. You're getting a small break here if you take this take it as a short-term trade to the top if you're lucky and they go that's okay right but be careful that it might be a short-term trade and there's a possibility you're going to get one more down so if you're taking a buy in this watch it for that third wave to the downside right it's not a third wave in terms of number it's a third wave in terms of counting right so I'm not saying it's a one, two, three structure. I'm saying it's a third wave, one wave, two wave, three wave in terms of a third in the pattern, right? So don't quote me wrong, right? US oil, downside, look for the downside. It looks like we might start to get a downside from here. So you may get a trade that comes down from there. What you're going to watch for here is what this is going to do here, right? It looks like they're starting to make an impulse. So if they make an impulse in a flag, an impulse in a flag, look for a sell setup. 
Now they can come back all the way to this low and they can even go lower. So keep your eyes on this one, right? UK oil, same thing. If they turn out to make a flag here, if this turns out that you, you get into, they, they make this, make a flag, and you get into a sell, and it comes here, you move your stop to break even, they take you out, you will look for the buy from here. All right? There isn't the buy setup on this, it's just there is sell setup. Natural gas, you probably get a buy setup here. See this? Short term. It's, it's going up as a corrective structure. So this is a buy setup on a short term. Take your profit very fast. Don't go for long-term trades there. New Zealand, Swiss, I think nothing much here. Cat, Swiss, nothing much there. Aussie, Swiss, nothing much there. Just stay out of these for now. They're not very clear. It's looking downside, but you don't have sell setups on them. You don't have the pattern that says sell setups on them. That is why. They're looking downside, and they will likely go down. You have to wait for the flag. That's the next 10 hours from now, right? S&P 500, watch it when it comes to this top. You see they're curving at the top there. You'll get one more downside. If that happens, you get one more downside. You're seeing it already, right? Nifty going up. Nifty broke the top. And that means watch Nifty. It broke the weekly top. See that? It, it's going to go some more, but very soon you're going to start to get some serious downside on this. Right, you can see that we have a lot of divergence. It's climbing, so you just gotta follow the buy and then you know wait, wait to see what happens. Somebody wants this DAX, the E30. They will tag that top and then come down. Look for the sell. They will tag that top. They will break the top. And then you can start to look for this. You you if you're a long-term trader, put an entry order here. I'm not making a trade call. I'm saying what I would do if I was trading this long term. I'll put an entry order here and leave it. Now, you will put the entry order only if you think your broker will take you in exactly there. You don't want your broker to take you in 200 pips lower, right? But watch this pattern here. Once they break that top, remember we're saying they're going to break that top. It means they're going to fall. How fast, how hard, that's a good question, but they can fall. If you're a very long-term trader or if you can buy ETFs or you can buy something else, which means sell, not buy, which means you can sell something here for downside take profit and that will not take you out if they go up that's okay look for a sell setup on a shorter time frame look for an impulse of flag and the sell now they might not give you that they're going to tag the top first i would like the top to tag first you might not when the fall starts you might not get that you know impulse and sideways and all of that uh i don't think this is the news that is going to drive it down unless the news move it up first and then down that's a possibility so if you're, you know, if you're a long-term trader on this and you don't have to worry about the next going to 130 or something like that, you can actually start looking for sell setups. It depends on what your strategy is in this, but it's going to go down very fast, very soon, right? Because when they make structures like this, you can see that they, they actually fall sometime very fast. Good for us if it goes slow. If you're trading it and it goes slow, you'll be okay. You don't have to worry, right? If it just goes slow, well, okay, you, you don't have to worry much about that. CAD is going up, by the way. CAD just made a very nice push. So let's see what else in here. Nothing else in here we trade. Copper, copper, copper doesn't have a structure to trade. Just stay out of it. It's going to come down, I think, this level, but it's not tradable as it is right now. Just wait. I think we're going to come down. Look, you see that pattern, right? Wait for the breakout of this. If you're waiting for breakout, wait for this breakout. They make a one, two, three here. One, two, three there. If they break this, they're going to go down somewhat more. So Nifty up. Oh, Nifty, never heard of that. that. I think that's the Indian, Indian, some Indian index. I don't know what it is, but we have a lot of Indian traders, and they give me that one. Actually, they trade it on a daily basis on lower time frames. So, okay, I think that's all for this. Uh, questions, any questions you guys have? Let me see. If you missed the first part, we can't repeat it. You'll just have to go watch the recording. I'll try to get a recording up very fast. Right? So, okay, what else? Bitcoins, let's see what Bitcoin is doing. I haven't looked at that for a long time. It's making that up move. You see, we said, watch this, watch this. They make this move and then they go up. They make that, they go up, they make it, they go up, they broke. You had, this was a nice entry, by the way, there. 
four hour. Yeah, I think you had a nice flag to bar buy here. See this flag here? You had another flag for a buy there. So keep your eyes on it. I think they can go up again. They can make another high and then come down. Oh, good. So uh, don't, don't worry with the questions. I'm going to go. People want to know how not to fear the market, right? So here's the, here, here's the, the we'll, we leave all the questions for later and I'll go tell you how not to fear the market. Here's what you need to do. Go buy anything. Pick any pair. Which pair you guys want me to pick? Fast. The first five that I get, I'll pick the one that has two in it. All you in New Zealand, Pong, USD, USD, are Pong Yen has two in it. Let's go with Pong Yen. The first one that has two, we'll go with. So Pong Yen. Take the Pong Yen. Go right now and buy one micro here. I don't know the size of your account. Buy it in the demo. Here's the thing. Buy this in the demo so that I don't make you lose money because you just buy that in the demo and don't do anything with it. Right? If your account is huge enough that one micro will, will, with one micro going 200 pips down or 200 pips up will not break your account, buy it with one micro. It's better if you have a live account and a strong account to do that. Go buy one micro. Don't put the stop and don't do anything. Don't do anything with it for the next month. Just watch it. Watch it as it goes up and as it goes down and as it goes up and as it goes down. And the longer you can keep it, the longer you can keep it, the better it is for you. You're going to start to understand how the market moves. And you come back six months from now and you're probably a break even. You follow, right? You could come back. Just buy the demo. Leave it. Don't do anything. Just leave it there, right? So it comes up to the top here. Don't worry. Don't take profit. Let it go down back. And don't, they, don't worry with that. Give it a couple of months, let it come back. You will understand how the market moves. The market does not go very far away from where it is, unless it's a daily trend or it's a, or it's a, or it's a weekly trend. But in this case, this is what the market is going to do. If you're a buyer, and I would be a buyer, you'll want to take profit when it either comes here or when it comes here. So if it goes against you, don't do anything. Just leave it. Pung Yen in monthly uptrend? No, Pung Yen is in a downtrend. I think you got that wrong. I don't even have to look at the chart. I know it's in a downtrend. I know the chart. I could draw it for you if you want. For Czar, for the US Czar, you've been asking for it for a long time. Let me see if I have it on. I think I did it for you last week. I did it every week. It's breaking now, finally. Yep. I think somebody asked me this, and I said, what? It's a nice buy, actually, right? So... You got a break if you if you're a long time trader, you can decide if not wait for a correction here and then you can go up, right? It looks it looks as some more up right now. Weekly, let's see the weekly structure looks like. Yeah, you can go up some more. You can see that, right? So you're probably gonna get some upside. So keep an eye. The, let's see that one for Turkish Lear. You're probably going to get some more downside here. And this one on the daily and the 240, what it's looking like. If you're trading the 240, you have a nice buy set up right now. See this? That's one more trade up. That's a short term buy. Right? When it, it's a very short term buy. So you'll have to get in and out with profit. Okay? Now, hey, we can't go do all of them. We'll run out of time, guys. We're already one hour up. So let me stop the recording.